The best place to learn Vim is of course VimTutor. When you download Vim and just type VimTutor in a terminal, uh, this little guide will come up and you should go through that if you want to learn all the basics. Uh, and Vim is a very powerful text editor that I think most people who use Linux end up using uh, if they don't go on to Emacs later. Uh, but once you go through this, it teaches you a whole lot of the basics. But there's some things that are very useful that they, for the sake of time, they don't go over. So in this video, I want to cover sort of, um, you know, all the best things about Vim that you don't learn in the Vim Tutor. At least five or six nice little tips. Um, so as an example, here is, here is a real life document. This is actually my thesis. Uh, and let me show you some things that, uh, you know, let me show you some things you might not know. Uh, so, of course, you learned that basic movement in Vim, of course, involves H, J, K, and L. So, uh, J and K are up and down, H and L are left and right. Um, now, one of the things that might be a little unintuitive to you is that, let's say you have a big paragraph like this. Uh, now, if I'm up here, I press K to go up, J to go down. You might think if you press J again, you'll go to this R. Um, but you actually go to the next line because this whole thing, this whole block here, that's just one logical line, and Vim moves on logical lines. Um, but let's say you want to move down just to this visual uh, line. What you, what you can do is press GJ, uh, or you know, to go up, you can press GK. Uh, if you press GK or GJ, uh, you can move on these visual lines, sort of in the way you would like in something like Microsoft Word. Um, so this might be more intuitive to you. Uh, it might be important in certain situations. And that's one thing that, you know, you don't actually hear that much, but it is out there. Um, so that's one little thing. Another thing, one thing that people who start using Vim often complain about uh, is that Vim doesn't necessarily have uh, a spell checker. Uh, except for it ab absolutely does have a spell checker. Uh, if you open up your VimRC, let me, just in case you don't know how to open up a VimRC, you just type in a terminal Vim uh, and then open up uh, .vimrc in your home directory. Uh, and here's my vimrc, yours might be empty if you've never changed it. But if you add this little line into uh, your vimrc, this will map the spell checking command to F6. And that's what I have in my configurations. So what that does is whenever you press F6, all of the misspelled words, or at least words that aren't in the dictionary, will be highlighted. Um, now, most of these actually all are correctly spelled. They're just not in the dictionary. But if I type something like, I like, you know, buttered toast, um, you'll see that the misspelled words are highlighted in red. So I can go in and change these uh, if I so need to. So that is a nice tool. People don't, a lot of people don't know that that's there, but that is a built-in uh, feature of Vim. Um, it's just sort of hidden away like all the features of Vim. They're all they're all a little hidden Vim has all these crazy things that people don't know about but they're um, You know, you got you got to look them out. Uh, so that's another thing now Another little optimization which I actually didn't learn about till recently. I'm a little uh, You know disappointed with myself uh, But in the Vim tutor you learn that you can use the delete and change keys with like different objects one of them is if you press D and then dollar sign that means delete uh, to the end of the line. So if we're here in the word two and press D dollar sign, it deletes everything after that to the end of the line. Same thing with C dollar sign that deletes and uh, puts you in insert mode. Uh, so th those are very important shortcuts. You use them all the time. Uh, but the thing is that's a little hard to press. It involves pressing two keys, one of which is like shift and then four, that's just a pain. Um, so what you can actually do instead is you can actually just press capital D and it does the same thing. I don't know why they don't tell you that. Uh, or capital C does the same thing and you can just uh, type whatever you want. Um, that is, I, I don't, I didn't know that until very recently. I feel sort of stupid for that. Uh, and there are also, one of the things I like doing when I'm bored in Vim is just randomly pressing buttons and seeing what happens. Uh, you know, some other ones, for example, there's capital J. So if you're on a line, J, capital J means join this line you're on with the line below it. So if I, I'm in this line right here, if I press capital J, uh, the line below it has been merged with it. Of course, it was empty, but if I press J again, uh, now we have these two paragraphs that are all in one paragraph. Um, so that, that's a nice key as well. Um, now, the big thing about Vim that they don't actually men mention in uh, Vim Tutor is uh, sort of uh, inner and outer objects. Now what that means is you learn in Vim 
In VimTutor, for example, let's say I'm right here. I want to replace this word. And what you do to do that is say C for change and W for word. And then you can type whatever you want, escape when you're done, uh, and that's it. Um, but if you're, let's say I'm in the middle of this word and I press CW, it only deletes the stuff afterwards. And you might want to do that in some situation. Uh, but if you want to change the entire word, what you can do is use inner or outer, depending on the or inner or around. Uh, so if you press C, uh, oops, if you press uh, C I W, that means change inner word. That means wherever I am in the word, change the entire thing. Um, so that will act on the entire. It will delete the whole thing and then you know go on and change it. Um, or if you press, uh, or you can do the same with D. So like D I W means delete inner word. Um, you can also do the same. So I is inner, A is around. So D a W means delete around the word. That means delete the word and the white space around it that we don't need anymore. Um, now you don't only have to do that with word words. You can say like D A S. That means delete around a sentence. So I just deleted an entire sentence with that. So D A S. Do it again. Undo those. Or uh, D uh, D A P for delete around a paragraph. I've now deleted an entire paragraph. Um, so now we can just make all these kind of modifications uh, just by feeding in arguments and the inner and outer arguments uh, sort of make this, uh, you know, really effective. Um, now, the last thing is, um, you know, one thing that goes with that that makes it really powerful is the dot command uh, or the, the period command. So whenever you press period in Vim, the period means do the exact command that I just told you to do over again. Uh, let's say, for example... Um, let me see how many times do I so I have the word possession a whole lot let's say I don't like the word possession I want to replace it with something um, now if I let's say I replace this word possession let me get rid of the spell checker I don't know why that's still on if I say replace possession ciw with um, you know buttercup uh, that's nice um, now I can let me actually search for another in instance of it let's say I want to replace that with buttercup as well well, I could press CIW and then type it out again, or I can just press period. And period just redoes the last command I did. Uh, you know, here it is again, you know, period, period, blah, 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 blah. So period is one of the most powerful commands in all of them, uh, because no matter what you're doing, it's just repeating what you just did. Uh, so for example, let me think of another example. Let's say you have a bunch of lines. Uh, I mean, let's say you're doing something uh, well, this is LaTeX, so we'll make some made-up LaTeX example. Um, let's say you want to add, like, something, uh, lines to the end, end of each line, or, like, physical, like, actual uh, horizontal lines. And you do that in LaTeX by the hline command. Um, so, hline. So I did that by whole, pressing capital A, as you can see, and then typing out hline. Um, so now if I press exit or, you know, move go back to normal mode, um, if I press uh, period again, it'll actually recreate the command I just did. Or period again, there it goes again. So this is a very nice way of just repeating commands. You don't have to really worry about what actually is going on. Um, and, you know, if you get your text objects right, you can make an enormous amount of modifications just by doing uh, periods. Um, so anyway, that's probably about enough. I threw a couple things out at you. Uh, you might want to practice them. I might have some other videos because there's so much just little stuff about them that don't necessarily need uh, videos for themselves. But, you know, maybe I'll have some other videos on this kind of stuff as well. Uh, so hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned something uh, and have some fun with them.